just getting everything set up, so this will just take me one minute or two. How's everyone? Hopefully. Let's see, what are we streaming? I don't really like when people do like hold with me or whatever, so let's uh come up with some uh coding some smash is the current title. Um Let's do HTML five canvas game development. That's what people are working on. Smash Brothers clone. Well, is it gaming content? Well, it is, but it's also not. So I'm guessing the gaming content is more like listing that you're in a game. Also, I left my phone downstairs, so I'm just gonna go get that before I flip the switch. So everyone just hang out, be awesome to each other, and I'll be right back. I, I am back. Back and ready to attack, or something like that. All right, let's uh, let's get this party rolling by not opening up Discord. Let's close that. Wait. Okay. I think we're good. I think that's uh, that's uh, visible. Let's, uh, let's go. Ash. Oh, we got some changes. Okay, so we're gonna have to figure out what those changes are and commit those before we get. We'll see. We'll see. Um. All right, and give me one second here. Kind of going into like a moderation view thing and doing all that cool stuff. You know. Typical uh, uh, one guy managing his stream uh, sort of things. Let's see. Cool. All right, it is uh, coding time. So let's see. Let's see what we got in here. I was monkeying around with. Uh, all sorts of things. So let's see. Connection ID stuff and Wi ID stuff. 
Okay, I kind of vaguely... Okay, so uh, the problem is, so I'm in the midst of doing peer-to-peer -peer multiplayer in the game, and when one peer disconnects, it crashes all the other clients. And I was trying to debug peer.js and like sort of hyper app at the same time. I don't know. Um, like, I, don't, I don't know which one is exactly the problem, but I am certainly going to find out. Let me, sorry, I got like moderation. One window over here. But, uh, all right, so that's the end. So we're gonna just say, oh, I actually did a couple things. It's gonna be a little, well, the camera should be isolated. I think that's, so let's do source, this canvas. So basically I made a component that is like a camera that zooms in and out depending on like where everyone on the screen is. that and I think everything else in here is related to uh, networking cool. cool all right so I'm gonna push that up totally not doing like strict branches either so I'm sure that's not um, super helpful, right? Like in a multiplayer uh, branch, I've got like stuff. But anyway, let's uh, for that temporarily. Put these windows, and we'll uh, we'll get the game up so we can kind of see the current state. Then we'll discuss uh, what we're gonna do to. Post or no? All right, so uh, you know, Raspberry, and I'm good. So you know, pick one of three characters, start a game, and I got a camera that, for the most part, kind of carries out where I am. Uh, it d it's not scaling perfectly with like, which is kind of strange. Yeah, that's uh, that's sort of it. Yeah, that's that's the game. <laughs> Ta da! Um, so I'm just gonna grab some coffee here. But uh, so there's a multiplayer mode, and we're gonna be debugging that. Um, but this is doing that for the benefit of. I see I've got. One new follower, uh, so thank you to uh, <laughs> some guy on Twitter. You know, that's how we, we always uh, say thanks to people. Some guy on Twitter. But, new follower, so uh, if you're here, nice to have you out. And if you're not here, then uh, I, hope, <laughs> I hope you're doing something fun that's potentially more fun than watching me code. Which is uh totally possible. Oh uh Ryan Nickel. So Ryan Nickel, if you're watching, uh big, big heart. You're uh one one more follower closer to world domination or, or something like that. I don't know. Alright, code. Gonna write some code. Great. So there's a couple things going on with multiplayer, and I've got some ideas about uh, that. Also, I'm gonna get some. Sorry, a little distract. Make that nice and quiet. Tunes are just for me, just so uh, there's no like copyright takedown, whatever silliness goes on on the internet. Oh, hello, Rufus. Come on in. Come on in. You do it. Oh, my dog's at my door, but he refuses to just like walk through the dogs. All right, so I'm gonna look at, we've got like a couple subscriptions. I think I'm also at the point where I need to pull, pull these out, like this, this file's getting a little heavy at 300 lines, which also in a terminal doesn't help. 
but I don't, I don't know that's like solve anything. So I've got like two two ideas about uh, the networking. Uh, so uh, sorry, must be okay. So I split them off into two separate um two separate things. So if you're not not aware for like peer to peer networking. Um, specifically with pure JS and like, uh, say just generally web RTC is, um, typically you connect to some sort of signaling server, which is kind of like the, if peer to peer was a card game, uh, the signal server is kind of like the dealer. Um, sorry, I got like a little wafer thing here beside me. Um, <laughs> I'm so distracted. I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, so. Basically, you, you signal your connection, and then other people can like query that signaling server to see connect to and who they can't. My dog left. He doesn't love. It. And uh, anyway, so uh, I have this peer handler, which is like probably the wrong name at this point. This is more like the uh, the, the signal uh, signaling handler. And sorry, I'm I'm just checking uh, checking some stuff here. Uh, is uh, uh, if if someone is on here and they're capable of speaking, if my fan is too loud, please let me know because otherwise I won't know, um, and that potentially would suck or be really funny. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe the fan's more entertaining than my voice. Anyway, so um, that's that's a long way of saying that. Um, the way the way that HyperApp works for for subscriptions is uh, if there's like a reorder or a change of properties, it'll restart the subscription, which is usually fine. However, I'm running into something where, uh, in this case, it is not fine, and it's not super clear to me what I'm supposed to do um, to resolve this. I think even here, like I've got this closing. That's not really what I want. Um, But yeah, so I've got two main options. So one is try and debug why these subscriptions are causing an error. I can demonstrate the error here too. I think I'll have to do it with Chrome though, since Firefox has some like peer-to-peer -peer local host issues. Um, so uh, that's one option. The other option is I can collapse these into one subscription. So um, the signal server would also, or sorry, the signal like subscription would handle all the client connections. Right now client connections are like a, a separate thing because like it's pretty big on its own and then if I'm combining that with like various other um, things, I think that'll be a, a bit of a bad time. Um, and these were originally like one thing and I separated them out because they were getting a little unmanageable together. It, it could become more manageable though if if for instance like I split this off into its own separate file and and like kind of teased it apart a little um, that's certainly an option let's, uh, let's clean those up um, yeah so um, this would be amusing All right, so I'm gonna save that I wonder if the uh, the problem isn't here, and if it's um, what I'm trying to broadcast. But uh, ultimately, like that should uh, result in this error here. This is more like um, peer connection, not really host connection. So originally, I, I did like a bit of an architecture where all the clients connect with um, one machine, which. Uh, wasn't great for a bunch of reasons, uh, mostly because peer-to-peer -peer isn't designed to work that way. So um, here, let me let me just do a little demo of this error, and then we can all be like, oh, okay, we're all on the same page. So I'm just going to uh, shrink this up, make this one a little bigger, and is it? Uh, Shift, Control, Shift. Uh, I go in between Mac and um, 
Mac and Linux and Firefox and Chrome so often that I, I don't really know what the shortcuts are anymore. <laughs> They're all different. Uh, where's my uh, inspect? Am I, okay. I like they, they did that menu. Anyway, so I'm gonna host a game. So hosting isn't like quite the right word anymore. It's more like a create a game. But anyway, so I'm gonna copy this and on top of that we'll just say like top, you know, this is the, uh, the top computer and we're gonna add this guy in there. And down here we're going to join. And this will be bottom, so we can see the top guy already. So nice and easy. So what happens is if we start the game here, you can see like down here, we can attack each other. That's all looking good. Uh, but if uh, if I close this tab, um, all sorts of bad stuff starts happening uh, based around like subscriptions and all sorts of things but it's not like it's not super clear where this bug is uh, like here it's just giving me like some application data um, which isn't quite what I would like um, so I don't know what any of this is like supposed to like end up translating to but anyway, so uh, something bad happens, and we're not able to uh, to manage manage this like client disconnection for whatever reason, and uh, that's that's strange uh, for sure. So uh, this is like one of the tricks in HyperApp is uh, when when things aren't working inside like effects, you can use uh, you can use like request animation frame to like queue up updates onto the uh, the next loop, and like something about this isn't working for sure. And in fact, like here we're getting like maximum uh, call stack. Um, it's like in some sort of an infinite loop, like you need to see that we just keep scrolling down. Um, this keeps going up. And there's, yeah, something something going on here with subscriptions, which really makes me believe that this could just be like a, if it's handling a bunch of peer connections, it's re reordering a bunch of other connections and, and causing um, some issues. So um, I'm going to just reload this and nuke that old version. So control shift I. Okay, there we go. So I, I guess that's the next thing that we got to do. Like, there's uh, I don't see many other options here uh, specifically. So let me just kind of have some coffee here to kick us off. So. My uh, my first intention, I think, is going to be to split up all the subscription code so I could probably combine the peer stuff together and pull everything out into their own subscriptions otherwise. And I think that's going to like at least solve, uh, I guess maybe not solve, uh, but certainly it's going to help make this file more manageable so if I want to have one larger subscription, hopefully that's not going to be that bad of a time. We'll see. Okay, so this is how I think it should go. So we'll make uh, subscriptions as a folder, and we'll move subscriptions into subscriptions index. Now, my assumption is that uh, okay, cool. So we're basically loading it by uh, by like path without uh, anything. So index should be picked up automatically for us. However, it looks like parcel wasn't too happy. Um, let's get rid of cache and dist as well. Um, but sometimes it doesn't like when you uh, toss in new files or like remap where a file goes, it ends up doing some bad stuff. Okay, so we're gonna open this up and we're gonna start pulling it apart. Uh, the one thing is this canvas context sub is probably 
probably not correct. Uh, I think this should be an effect. So I'm gonna like kind of leave that one alone for now, and we're gonna get the uh, keyboard input and the gamepad inputs uh, separate. So let's do keyboard. Okay, so I'll call it keyboard layer. Okay, so that is this guy here. So we're just gonna grab this whole thing. I guess uh, just to there, really. And um, what do we have to do to pull this out? So it looks like we, I'm gonna move this up to the top just so it's isolated. Okay, so that one's not too bad, like, <laughs> 69, uh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Such a stupid juvenile joke, but at the same time, I'm stupid and juvenile, so that's why people love me, or, or something like that. Oh yeah, I should probably tweet out that like I'm finally doing some code. Yeah, yeah, let's do that real quick. Do it real quick. Twitter and social media is just like, it's so difficult to do. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, you gotta always be posting stuff and, and stuff. Um, yeah. that out to uh, all my followers or something like that <laughs> you know like all one or two people that come by and uh, support me by the way thank you for supporting me even if it's not monetary um, just the fact that people um, are entertained and get something out of this and maybe learn a little bit is uh, really neat Okay, so, um, sorry, coding and like talking sometimes is just like, it's a lot. Nothing wrong with that though, but just, uh, sometimes I, I do it really well and other times it is a struggle. So, you know, that's just how it is. Alright, let's pull out a uh, gamepad player as well. Hopefully with this we'll recombine my uh, network subscriptions and we'll see if that like resolves something. I'm, I'm not 100% sure it's going to solve um, everything, but we'll see. It's funny going back through code that you wrote like a month or two ago and you're just like, I don't remember naming this or I don't even remember coding this. Oh, this, I uh, went way too far with that. That is all there is there.
units. Um, should we just call this like pure JS? And or. Hmm. Yeah. And for now, we'll export both things out and then we'll see what we can do about combining them. Alright, so we got peer connection and then I'm guessing uh, peer handler. Okay. So um, presumably we're still in green state. So if I were to uh, just restart the server after clearing the cache and all that good stuff, refresh this and uh, go into multiplayer mode again. You know, let's verify that we at least see the same behavior. still works in between those so that's cool hey comrade panda it's going pretty well how's it going for yourself also welcome to the stream I'm not sure I recognize you Cool. Um, feel free to ask uh, as many questions as you want. Um, I like to do kind of like interactive learning. In fact, <laughs> I, I, I've done a JavaScript course. Uh, if you're interested, I think if you've uh, if you went to my website, which is uh, mrberry.com, you could find links to that. It's a paid course though, so like don't don't feel pressured into that. There's lots of lots of good courses out there. Um, that's cool. Uh, what are you learning? Are you learning like uh, web development, JavaScript? <laughs> no, that's, that's cool. Um, but yeah, like, feel free, fire away. Um, I'll be coding and I'll take like uh, some glances over at conversation uh, with any sort of questions that you have. Specifically, I'm using web technologies for this game development. I do have some like knowledge of like uh, like system level development with like low level C, app development with like C++ and like uh, uh, Qt5 or Qt5 depending on if you like to pronounce it or not. Um, Mac and uh, Linux dev, not much on the Windows side though so I can't, can't answer too many questions about that but otherwise um, feel free. Uh, Alright so Oh, shit, I forgot that would uh, refresh that. Didn't have time to expose my bug. Okay, we'll just, you know, hammer in some random stuff here. And uh, more random stuff here. And now if I disconnect there, this should uh, go all sorts of crazy. Now starting with Java, so Java is not a, a bad language to start with. Uh, although keep in mind there is a distinction between Java and JavaScript. So if you're doing like 
uh, programming in a browser, it's more likely to be JavaScript and not Java. Um, there is a long history of why those names uh, are similar, but they're also languages that are nothing like. Um, but yeah, um, I started uh, doing uh, general game, actually just general programming, like 2001 or so. And I was kind of in the same boat. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I thought games were fun, and you know that those always ended up being my side projects. Yeah, and most languages you can do whatever you want in. Uh, of course, there's some languages that are uh, way more specialized into like certain tasks as well. Uh, JavaScript is certainly a very like general purpose uh, language. Uh, which you know for every general purpose language there's you know half the people that are like man that language sucks and whatever you know it's uh, the brunt of the joke but uh, yeah I mean every language has uh, has its uh, perks and problems right yeah yeah the one thing uh, you might want to be cautious about is uh, I think Java's getting like uh, uh, pretty uh, pretty bad like security um, on browsers. So I think most browsers are starting to close up how much Java can interact with uh, with the system, or at least like it's being discouraged. Like for the same reason that Flash is being um, like properly discontinued. Um, yeah. So just like uh, maybe like a thing to keep in mind. Not a big deal, though, you know? Okay, let's do that. Okay, so uh, I've certainly exposed uh, this peer connection thing. So if, if we change this to peer JS handler, and it handled um, uh, just about all of this, except for connection. Let's actually use add connection. Oh, that's when we add a like a an extra connection. So okay, gonna have to rename all these. Okay, let's uh, dump all those actions in there. Ah, beards, they just beards go everywhere. <laughs> if if uh, if you are a human that can grow a beard. It's a uh, it's a real bad time. Beware. Um, okay, so let's. Uh... Oh, um, if you checked out, um, let's see, MDN Audio Context. So MDN is a great resource for uh, JavaScript. It's uh, the Mozilla Developer Docs. Um, so. If you want to stick with JavaScript, um, then and like do browser-based stuff, you could use this. Uh, there's lots of tools to pull out like uh, all sorts of data from an audio channel, um, including like setting up oscillators and like wave shape. Uh, but all these things you can use to like pull out um, information and build like a visualizer. Oh, if it's for a wallpaper engine, then yeah, you'll probably want to stick with... Java would probably do it. I guess it depends on what platform um, you're like intending to develop for. If, if it's for like Windows, you're, you're probably going to have a better time in like the C family of languages. But that's just, uh, that's a totally opinionated uh, thing. So we got all that pulled out, and we just need to grab all that. And grab all this. Now, when we open a connection, we should be able to do something like this. 
Oh, that's awful. Jeez. Big chunk of code. Alright, so... So, on a client, when we get... Oh, you know what? This can actually be pulled at one level. Yeah, um, so I can't say I've ever made anything that manipulates uh, your wallpaper, but if if you're on Windows, like Visual C++ is like gonna be uh, the way to do it for sure. And I think uh, what is it? Is direct audio a thing? I think direct audio is a thing, and it's like the Windows API for um, handling audio. Actually, I don't even know if it's called Win32 anymore, uh, to be honest. Oh, Core Audio, there we go. So uh, with this, you can like enumerate like audio devices, and I believe you can kind of like set up a listener. But like, I'm I'm not the expert in that. Um, that's kind of not my not my thing. But that might give you um, a helpful direction to look. Let's, uh, let's kill all that, and let's Oh yeah, yeah. So if you're um, if you're using like uh, some sort of HTML file as your background, then you could certainly use JavaScript. I think that would be the way to do it. However, um, I I get the impression that you wouldn't be able to access like whatever's happening in your system audio. So you need some sort of like driver or something running in the background to like send information to the HTML page about uh, your audio data. And I think that's going to be um, very problematic. Got too many index.js files now. Jeez. All right, so let's uh, let's go up here. And let's not worry about enumerating uh, network connections anymore, but we are going to pull all that out. We're not using on done anymore, so that's good. Yeah, like if I understand correctly, you have a wallpaper on your desktop. And that wallpaper, you would like it to be a visualization of like some audio. Um, right? Am I, am I am I correct so far? Like you want like some sort of uh, like tunnel visualizer or like uh, what are they called like spectra a spectrograph? I don't think that's the right word. But. Uh, yeah, like if you're just starting to program, like I have a feeling that this is like a handful of steps beyond like a beginner thing because you need something. So if we were to break down the problem, right? Like, so you want something that can first live render some sort of visualization to your desktop, right? So that's one problem. So if you don't know any drawing APIs, then you're gonna have to learn that, which is fine, right? Like anything in programming you can learn. Uh, but there's that. Uh, for audio, you got to figure out a way to um, figure out what audio is playing on your system. Um, so if you're in the HTML world, you don't have access to that. You're going to have to have some like external service listening uh, to audio events on your like on your operating system, and then like react to those. Um, and uh, then as a result, you're going to have to have some sort of like 
background drop. So not only do you need like a way to interpret like the audio data into a visualization, uh, but you need a way to like pipe pipe that audio data to your web page. So that, to me, that sounds like a couple problems that if I were a beginner, that would be a lot to like bite off at once. So I'm not saying it's not possible, um, but I am saying that like. I guess I, I would caution you that that is a pretty big project if you're new. Okay, so you have some sort of uh, background job already that makes the visualization in an image and you just want to like live load that image as it changes. Don't worry about that. Trying to find help for programming can be really tedious, especially uh, when you're new to programming, right? And you don't you don't necessarily know all the terms or all the all the things that are available to you. So don't worry about it. We we all got there at some point. any of that. 
sure. I'm not an expert by any means in like audio visualization, uh, but my guesses are taking some sort of like waveform from the audio and then like plotting those points in some way. Uh, but I I'm not going to be able to help you understand that, especially like some other script over uh, like Twitch comments. That's going to be a real bad time. So in terms of like, so it sounds like you're using some sort of canvas or SVG. Um, so I conveniently have a library called Declarativus. It's an NPM library, which I don't know how that would uh, get connected in with your visualization. Um, but like some of the stuff I do involves that. So I have like a way to like declare canvas changes, but like it's very possible that whatever library or code snippet you're using isn't using that so I can't I can't make a lot of uh, a lot of educated or, or smart smart like guesses about what's going on with that so sorry man or woman I'm not I'm not here to judge Yeah, uh, like I mean, I'm mostly in network code today, so I don't know that you're gonna get like a a huge sense for for drawing code. Um, but you can look at uh, I have the source code available GitHub.com/slash Mr. Osbury slash Smash, and uh, there's there's a lot of drawing code in there. Um, but again, like depending on how things are being drawn on like the code in here may not actually translate very well to what uh, whatever you're uh, trying to do so just keep that in mind I guess yeah that's fair Don't have an ID. What the heck? Where am I using that? It's for adding a connection. See it saying if I haven't connected to that ID before, then connect to it. Okay, that seems pretty sane. Uh, 
Um, if you want to draw on a JavaScript canvas, then JavaScript would be the way to go. Uh, I'm sure you could do what you want to do with Java as well. Um, I just don't know. I'm not a Java developer, so I, I couldn't uh, I couldn't give you a lot of insight into that side. But uh, you can certainly embed Java apps into HTML. But at that point, uh, like, why would you even bother with HTML? Like, you, you'd be better off finding like some sort of API where you could just manipulate the wallpaper of a computer. Like, you wouldn't need HTML at that point. Let's see, so look, connect peer. So I use my peer and I join this game ID. I mean that's how a program mostly goes is like you pick up one thing and as you pick up one thing you realize uh, like for instance like I my transition was like Q basic to PHP uh, to C to C++ uh, to, what else we go uh, Ruby uh, you know the more things you pick up the easier you realize it is to like translate the ideas you know to another language so yeah I mean, keep it up. I, I, I highly encourage uh, learning like that. So, Let's see, so we have network connect, and then point add. So, I guess this makes more sense. This would be more like network client connect.
this seems like it's the wrong place. one client and we want to tell them we have an index of peers for them to connect to okay that's not too crazy which means we're gonna have to update an effect so we have message connections for now we're just going to duplicate this and then hopefully remove um, Connections. This is going to be a message uh, clients with X. We're going to take in a set of clients. state of a client be able to skip over um, unconnected ones unconnected disconnected all right so we should be looking at data connections okay so uh, there's a, a check for open so you could say if uh, not client open then skip over that client for now And we shouldn't have to request animation frame that. We're just sending data. That's not that's not a thing we gotta do. I guess I was doing that to uh, not be long, but this shouldn't affect our frame rate, uh, frame rate or anything like that. So, in fact, let's uh, let's remove that here as well. And for now, we can do the same things here. So, if not, connection .client .open. Continue. Let's see what else we have. So reliable, I don't care about that. Serialization, don't care. Type, don't care. Buffer size, don't care. Okay, so that should uh, work for both those. Clients, we just need client in there as an array. Oops. Coffee, coffee, coffee. So um, we're mapping over connections, um, passing IDs, so this can just be clients. And then that just becomes c.peer. Nice. And client remove. Kind of do the same thing here. So clients will be state.network.clients.filter. Um, I mean, at that point, we just have presumably duplicate objects, so I should be able to say like, uh, but we're doing it by ID, which is fine. So we could say c.peer, and this would be, I'm guessing, to simplify, oops, uh, peer.simplify ID. And that's kind of long, so I get why I wrap that. And I guess we're mostly wrapping parameters too, which is probably like a good thing. You know, makes things a little more readable. All right, if we remove a client, we don't worry about telling any other clients about that, so that should be perfectly fine. So I should be able to theoretically nuke clients. There might be a few spots if we're still using it, but we'll, uh, we'll hunt it all down. I'm sorry, we can get rid of connections on clients. So that's it for that. But I'm pretty sure in 
places like here. Actually, no, I guess it would be uh, message connections. That's what we want for. Let's change that to clients. And clients is going to be everybody. This would be a little painful, but you know, sometimes you got to do a little bit of pain for a refactor. And it also like kind of shows you how many times you're actually um, like passing um, like a connection or a client around, or like messaging, which all seems not great. as well um, but that's uh, that's another thing Passing around a lot of uh, client information all the time. There's like a couple like choke points where I'm pretty sure I could do this a little more efficiently, so I might look into doing that a little more as well. again should mostly still be working with a couple exceptions um, I might be using connection still occasionally they have connection remove as an action so what is this oh this is for like removing a player it seems like it's probably um, probably horribly misnamed at this point So the remove button doesn't work anymore. Well, let's, uh, let's figure out what it should be. So we have a player. I'm guessing there's going to be like a player remove. And there we just like pull it out of players. But ultimately it seems like we should be messaging um, other other connections and just be like, hey, that, that player's gone, by the way. I, if there's uh, connections to message. So uh, let's pretend that that uh, exists. So we're going to message. 
lineage, all of the clients that we know about. And we're going to say uh, player remove. And let's pass along that player altogether and we'll figure out what the unique thing is about that player. I mean, the idea, I guess, is the, the thing. <laughs> so let's actually say player ID is ID. And that seems like a same path. And then if there's no network clients, then that should just like, work in the box. Let's change this to player remove. And uh, let's see, what else do we need to do? I guess we gotta keep looking for any other reference to connection and try and um, try to move those. So we have like by connection ID. So this should actually be by like parent ID or something like that. So we have a connection ID on here, so this should probably be like peer ID. Like, I mean, at this point, I should just be passing the entire actions object. It's like it's a static object. Um, actually, that's starting to feel like it's the right thing. And then there's like no name remapping. All right, we're gonna do that. That's gonna make my life much easier, I think, in the uh, grand scheme of things. So I'm gonna go to pure JS handler and we're gonna take in actions. It's a whole deal. And we know share local players is going to map to player share locals with connection. It looks like that is uh, sort of the wrong thing now, so that should be with client. And then we could just pass in the client wholesale. Seems like that should be like one call. And this should be a separate call. And then this one's just really long, so let's uh, break that up a little bit. So that gets rid of one thing, and then we have a client add player, which becomes uh, actions player merge. Cool, and we'll just delete these things as we're not using them as well. That's going to make life even easier. So clients set player inputs. So uh, what is that? That's a uh, player input change. Client player punch, and uh, this is going to become oops, player get punched. And I'll just keep on going. 
basically the end of that big awful list. Oh, somehow we still have client ad somewhere. Oh, right at the beginning. a lot of things into that subscription but that subscription does a lot of things so maybe maybe that's fine I don't know. Anyway, time for some more coffee today I am doing a local coffee this is from a company called Baden Roasters or Baden Coffee Roasters it's not too bad this one's called Charlie's Dark Secret not like it won't be my, my coffee that I go to um, by chance, but it's local and easy to get, so. Also, not a sponsor. But if you want to sponsor me, I've got, I've got ways to do it. <laughs> I don't need money though, so you don't have to sponsor me if you don't want to. It's just a thing that helps me uh, prioritize time and resources. That's my um, mid midstream talk. So, anyway, if you like this, want to support me financially, you can. And that just lets me uh, deal with some server costs uh, I have for some open source projects. And uh, it could also help me get into more doing like tutorial videos and having like uh, something that I can pay to do editing because that is not what I'm good at. So, that's all. <laughs> um, Alright, so. I've been slowly uh, getting rid of anything that uses uh, connect. <laughs> Easy plug, yeah. Uh, let's see, on add connection, we've got some like network action things going on here. connection ID things going on here. I think we want to change that to peer ID. with connection so I think we want to rename that one to uh, with client eh. we didn't rename it but I think it should be renamed oh yeah if you want to find all the ways you can sponsor me you go to my website um, mrberry.com uh, there should be links to like patreon and github sponsorship um, stuff um, but again like don't do it don't be don't feel obligated um, yeah but if you want to do it <laughs> oh man I should be less uh, less apologetic about asking for donations eh? <laughs> Coffee, coffee, coffee. All right, so let's uh, let's see how much of this I broke. By the way, if only I wrote tests, but I didn't because I didn't actually think I would be doing this project for as long as I am. <laughs> All right, so undefined is not iterable. It affects uh, line two. Well, uh, I mean that certainly looks uh, incorrect. I mean, 
I don't think it's that line that's the problem because uh, there's nothing weird in there. So I'm guessing we have a uh, message clients. And if we look for all message clients, I'm sure one of these is uh, wrong. Uh, look pretty sane to me. Something's not in there. So uh, first thing I can think of is let's clear any like build cache just in case and refresh this. Of course we don't have any network clients that we're going to be directly talking to here but uh, let's uh, just join. Okay so this uh, came from message clients and that was like some sort of anonymous thing, pure JS handler. So network client add. Let's go over there. Uh, network client add. There we go. So uh, we take in a client, we add them to the list. And then we uh, share that list of IDs out. Okay, um, so on open, we have uh, two things going on. So let's go over to our peer handler. So like, I shouldn't have to even like do this. This should be like mostly synchronous at this point. So let's at least pull it at that. And share locals or player share locals with client seems like it could be a candidate for a problem. So let's see, so we pull out all the all of our local players that we're pretty sure have uh, local controls. And for each of those players we message that one client with that one player. So that certainly seems uh, within the realm of a reason. And network client add. So if we check out that, so we pass it a client and we just push that client in. There's no magic going on there. Then we just send out the simplified IDs to clients. Now, the one thing is, it's uh, actually this machine that's crashing and not, as far as I'm aware, this. Oh. No, this machine has a problem too. Um, okay, so that's interesting. We made like a handful of changes too, so this is going to be a little painful to, uh, to suss out. for unsending the peer, that's probably where we should do like a disconnect to. So let's uh, let's grab our effects and we're going to uh, we're going to save that. We're going to go back into unset peer, and we're going to make a new effect. So we've got this like connection one up here. So we're going to do a kind of net network dis destroy peer. And I don't think we need to do any dispatching on this one. So we could just uh, ignore dispatch and we need to pass in the peer. That's really about it. And we're going to do um, peer destroy. And we'll export const network destroy peer. It takes in uh, props and we're gonna do network destroy that props. By the way, HyperApp is going to get a new effects uh, 
thing at some point. Uh, Jorge is working on uh, something that looked pretty interesting last uh, last I kind of uh, peeked into that chat. So maybe at some point this is going to take an overhaul um, anyway. We'll see. Right, so when we unset the peer, we are going to update our state. And now we're going to do effects network destroy peer. We're going to pass in peer as a, as a state dot network dot peer. So this will be still a reference to the old one. It doesn't know about this update yet, which is convenient for us. All right, so uh, we're going to post a new game. Nothing going on there so far, so that's good. Join. Uh, we get some sort of issue over here, and it looks like a similar issue here. Now the difference is this one, uh, this one happens on message clients. So I'm open. We've got an emit and an effect here, uh, which uh, all it says is. Uh, Add the connection once we're good. Which effect is this? Is this the network connect peer? So doing this on add connection uh, certainly does something. Now we know that it's actually called network client add. So I almost want to do that. Network client add. This is just going to make it easier for us to debug all sorts of things. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Alright, well, one thing for sure is we're setting the peer. And we, well, this doesn't even seem to be the right spot. So this is just saying um, our connection is like officially open. At the same time, like, like if I waited here for a number of seconds, I, I wouldn't expect to see that error just pop up. It only happens when we connect in. And we see this error on this side first. So that tells me that something about doing a connection is a problem. So uh, when we do a connection, so what we're doing here is we're, um, we're saying we want to connect by a certain ID. And this ID should be the full ID. So let's see where we use this. Network client connect. So we go through this and we get a set of IDs and we know these are actually simplified IDs. Uh, so that's sort of important. So we must get into some sort of loop where we're trying to connect multiple times. So uh, on top of that, let's uh, let's just open up another file here. We're going to look for peers.index. Which is our, uh, our message that we send. And uh, let's send out uh, the, the full pure thing because we can always simplify that later. I think that's, um, that's going to be the nicer route. So we know this is a full ID and we know so when we do that connect up here this is going to take in the full ID and then simplify it for our connection. And this on add connection, so let's do, uh, let's find that network. Um, oh, I see. We're actually already there. Um, oh, but that's an, an effect. So let's open up our effects here. And we're looking for network. 
here. And uh, we have already changed that, so let's, let's fix that. All right, so still undefined is not iterable on effects line three. Now it says line three, but like that, that seems wrong. That ends up going back to effects 153. That's here. So uh, let's just do a console log message clients fx. And we're just going to debug everything. So we have a list of clients that we're messaging, a payload that we want to send, and also um, a stringified version of that payload. And uh, all those uh, things seem important to me. Cool. So I got a list of no clients. Which action is this part of? The thing that makes it really hard to, to trace these things is um, it's, it's not always clear because like HyperApp kind of like handles a percentage of this. So, I mean, let's, uh, this is like on, on connect. So let's, uh, let's go to the view and let's see, uh, let's see what we actually, uh, send out. So I think we, there's actually like a, uh, okay, there must be a form in here. Yeah, there we go. So we got a form and we submit like a join game ID. We send that to network initialize. So uh, which so this is for hosting. So hosting, um, I think we feel pretty good about. Um, oh no no, the host is a separate thing. So that's just network initialize. Whereas this one is network initialize with a join game ID. So let's uh, let's go into the network initialize. Um, Handler, and we we don't send out a message on this, but we do do a uh, network create peer effect, which is this here. So we don't do anything uh, too crazy initially, but we do say that after we create the peer, we uh, we call network set peer. And it looks like we optionally send it a join game and an ID. So let's actually see if we care about those things. So we definitely set the peer. Oh, I see. So we're just chaining these through. Uh, this should be clients and not client. accidentally do something really silly with that. So here we've got a client instead of clients. So let's look for client colon. Okay, so I think that was actually our bug. So let's host another game. There we go. So uh, these connected. Um, so this sent out a pure index, but we should probably optimize this because if we're sending out a uh, peers index with zero, there's no value in that. So uh, let's actually find that. So we could say if um, state.network.clients.length is greater than zero and So let's host and let's connect to that host. There you go. So I didn't transmit anything because uh, there's nothing to transmit. So let's add a top player. Didn't send it down, but it did send a player update. But we didn't receive a message down here. Now that's not to say we didn't receive it, but. Uh, Maybe we do. So um, let's see what's up with that. Uh, let's.
let's go into where would that be? Probably in the subscription for this. So we have an on data and we have an if closed. Well, we don't have a closed, so um, I'm already suspicious of that. So let's get rid of that. And uh, we're going to connect in, uh, let's say top, arrows, that's sent, that game data. We still didn't get anything down here, so that is interesting. So let's do a console log on data. Actually, we'll just log out. Yeah, let's do both. Data and string data. Yeah, let's move that down there and use um, real strings, you know. And let's see, uh, maybe uh, we're just not using this correctly. Like, it certainly looks like we are. Yeah, I, I feel pretty good about that. But. So we sent out the data. We didn't see it at all down here. And that's. Um, that's pretty weird. So let's see, we get a uh, client in, and as soon as we do, we kind of set up these functions and we set up our handlers. To this client. Do I have like a separate on data thing that I'm not aware of? We have like on disconnected, on error, connection. quite interesting. So let's see, what would be a cause for that? I mean like th this might be an indicator here. So uh, if we refresh both these guys. So essentially we should see this new connection on both. So we'll do host and we're going to um, join up. So we see the new connection here, but we don't see the new connection down here. So why would that be? This is like the signaling. Actually, let's 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 rename this altogether. So we call this a peer, and sort of what it is, but at the same time, it's not. So uh, let's do percent s. We're going to say peer to uh, signal. Yeah. It's, it's sort of a peer. Um, signaler or something like that. Uh, but like naming, changing that name isn't going to fix whatever's going on. And even more like perplexing is like this, this did work. So when I send a connection out, I should get a like an on connect. I feel like I should. Hmm. So re 
reason that this could be failing, maybe. So let's uh, just log a client in there for now, just to see like where the connection failure is. So we see the client get connected in. Um, maybe that dot open uh, doesn't work the way I think it does. Because that's possible. I mean, it looks like it might be some sort of uh, just way that it was like, dotted out. Um, some sort of like getter. Which I can't say I'm too big of a fan of. Like there's underscore open set to true here. It sort of feels like, um, oh, you know what? Maybe let's check out uh, effects. We I sort of want to see like uh, all the times that we skip over a, uh, a client just because they're not open. Say uh, skipping client because not open and dump the client in there. That is not what I wanted. Cool. So I'm going to get a join code and we're going to join in. So I messaged all the clients. Uh, we certainly seem to have uh, one in here, so I, I feel pretty good about that. Is there, um, so let's see, when we are a top level peer, we'll get a uh, connection turned to us. We don't get a direct data thing on there, so that's good. Um, but like th that also means that when we do that connect, it doesn't get. Uh, there's no association with this. So that was actually that was why we had a separate thing for it. Well, that sucks. Um, Optionally, I could just. Hmm. I could have two connections per machine, I guess. But that seems contrary, though. Contrary to what I want. made a new subscription we're, we're just going to call this like data handler or data connection handler.js so we're, we're going to kind of revert the uh the combination that we did here i think oops uh, let's uh, un undo whatever i accidentally just did Ugh. Okay, and this is just going to be a data connection handler. I'm just going to take in a connection, not a client. Um, hmm. At this point, we already have the client, so let's just. Uh, Get rid of most of this stuff and most of that stuff. And let's rename all of our things. This will be facts.
so it's not happy about all sorts of things. Looks like it's mostly indentation though. That's a pretty easy fix. Alright, so we have a, an open handler. That's probably not necessary. This seems like it's probably misdirection. We're gonna get rid of like anything that could possibly gum up the system without us knowing. We've got this connection ID, and that seems like the wrong thing as well. So let's just check out player and uh, uh, by peer ID. We're expecting a peer ID to come through, so let's set that. The big thing is like I, I think this is isn't going to be resilient to uh, all the connection stuff that I was trying to avoid, but maybe maybe that's just the nature of it, um, meaning that there's got to be some other uh, way for me to handle all you know like all the stuff I'm handling. So. Um, Big thing is that um, this is going to be like reasonably variable. And as a result, it's going to be uh, a little annoying to deal with. And by this, I mean uh, this one. So let's see if maybe there's a good place that we can put it. Um, here. So if we're in the game, do these things. If we're in character select, do these things. But at the very bottom here, we could just do um, state.network.clients.map client. And we're going to say uh, subscriptions.data uh, connection handler. And uh, that's actually a method. We're going to pass it some stuff, including client and actions. That means that um, this is going to have to export a data connection handler from data connection handler.js. So I got connected. Now, if I send stuff, my guess is that there we go. We're back in uh, back in a situation where uh, these two things work together. If I close this, we get a whole different error, which is um, interesting. So this is on patch property. But well, that, that's a different error, and that's um, in, very interesting. Um, let's see, why, why would that have uh, happened that way? So we have this on close and on error, and on close uh, removes the network client. So if we uh, look in there and just check out uh, network client remove. We just figure out where uh, that simplified peer ID gets used and we just remove those. Now that seems to me like we should be uh, calling an effect as well to properly close those. So let's do uh, network close data connection effects. 
I think this is going to be the same situation. We have like a dispatch that we don't care about and a client that we are going to close. And then here, I think there's a client.close. In fact, this would be something like if client.open, client close. And that should keep it reasonably uh, reasonably safe. In fact, we can just run that. A lot of people don't like this because it's not as nice to like, I guess, uh, dynamically add more things. But at the same time, eh, not a big deal. Also, uh, welcome. A bunch, <laughs> a bunch of people seem to have joined in the last bit since I checked who was on. Welcome, especially uh, a very good pal of mine, Mr. James Emrich. So uh, nice to uh, nice to see you swing by. Yeah, that's right. I'm watching you. Oh, actually, let's do this. I'm watching. You. There we go. Sometimes you're talking to the mic without thinking about the mic and the camera being in very, <laughs> very different positions. So. Aw, thanks. Speaking of support, uh, my second, <laughs> my second mid, uh, midstream. Uh, hey, if you want to support me, uh, you can sponsor me on GitHub, and you can uh, join my Patreon stuff. Where right now, what that does is it supports my coffee habit, any servers I'm hosting for open source, and will maybe let me pay uh, someone to edit videos, and then I can actually like upload like video tutorials and not just live stream. But you know, don't don't feel obligated. I'm quite happy to just do live streams. But if if you want to see more content, uh, and you you like you like what you see, <laughs> um, feel feel free to check that out. All on MrBerry.com. And by Mr. I mean Mr. Berry. You know, like Mr. Berry oh, or Berry Berry.com. It's a trust thing, Barry. Hey, look, there's my beautiful face. And I was skinnier in this photo, too, so it's like, you know, like more hubba hubba than what you currently have, you know? Oh, wow, look at that. Also, a video course and some other stuff. And uh, a couple people that develop stuff. You can find it all on mrberry.com. <laughs> you won't find everything on there. You'll find a, a few things, so. All right, so uh, that, <laughs> that was an excursion. Um, Alright, so if we're removing a bunch of these connections, we should probably, um, yeah, delete, delete those as well. Do a proper close and clean up and all that because network coding is hard. So I think in the same way that we did this filter, we should be able to like do the inverse of that filter and then map. So let's go to back here and we're going to say uh, filter where these are the same. And we're gonna do some stuff here. We're gonna say, and then map. And we're gonna do effects dot network close data connection. And we're gonna pass it our client, which we should just rename this, Ugh. <laughs> or or name it whatever that was. Ugh. Oh, let me tell you, COVID added quite a few pounds. I'm, I'm not happy about it, but you know, sometimes uh, that is the COVID life <laughs> or something like that. Um, yeah, yeah. All right, so let's see. So when we remove a client, let's, uh, let's go back to that uh, subscription code. Make sure we're actually passing back things that I think we should be. So it's simplified peer, so we should be comparing simplified peer stuff. That all looks good to me. And uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do that. Okay, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's see how, how badly, how badly this works. <laughs> or how well it works. Let's be positive. So I'm just going to, you know, do the old, adjust a few things here. Oh, you know what? Let's pull it up a little. It's fine. All right. 
right, so host game, load this up, do a join code. <laughs> it's a COVID not life for us. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I subjected everyone to that little ditty. Good one, James. All right, so that's all looking good. And if we close that, still got some real bad stuff going on here. So fail to execute set attribute on element zero. It's not a valid attribute name. Okay. Um, so I don't have anything that's like specifically rendering anything involving uh, clients at all. So that's interesting, but data connection handler is of course removing that client. And the, so maybe it's these two like dispatches together that's causing some issues. Hmm. Okay, so um, I guess we'll, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a little, um, we're gonna give it the D. So we're gonna say action props, and we're gonna do request animation, animation frame. And that's gonna be dispatch action props. And we'll just try it with these two for now. Oh wait, did I close? Oh right, of course I did, because that's how I'm resetting up here. I should probably just re refresh the browser, and that would cause less problems in general. Okay, so uh, let's uh, join in. Cool, and um, so if I refresh, some stuff happened here, but it didn't kill the uh, the app. So that's a good sign. So we're just gonna add a player here. We're going to attempt to uh, join in here. And uh, cool. And uh, presumably, I should be able to refresh the browser. Okay, and it totally died again. I cannot read property ID of undefined for character select 188. Okay. So here it's like, it's checking out like player ID, and this player is apparently null at that point. So if we have a null player, we could do a filter boolean. I didn't think we'd get a null player. To be honest, so that's weird. So it must be accidentally knowing it out, which seems yeah, seems like the wrong thing. So I think this is like a band-aid fix. We're gonna find out what the real fix should be though. Okay, so let's do the bottom. So now there's technically uh, you know some players here with real data, and we're gonna just refresh this. Not, not a huge fan of that, but like, here it's like causing some sort of like issue in the renderer, and that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, yeah, we've got like, so dispatching this is like problematic for reasons. And I don't like that. So when we close, uh, we, we fire off the uh, remove the client and remove the players. We can also reorder that. I don't think that's actually the problem, but for the sake of um, probably the order that we care about is get rid of any players that use that peer ID. And that makes me feel like this could be doing the wrong thing. So let's go into our player code and we're going to say look for player remove by peer ID. What we're doing is we're saying if this uh, if the peer ID 
is the same, then uh, clear it out. So just don't merge anything into this object. And otherwise, um, spread that particular player in. This looks wrong though. This looks like it should be something like um, yeah, I think that's actually the problem here. Must be it. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So let's try this again. The synchronous code in JavaScript is like particularly problematic because you get like errors that like say they're one spot and they're totally totally not. So uh, let's do uh, top. Add that player and he's ready. Bottom. And cool, so that player is there. We're gonna refresh, disconnects them. They're still here, so that's uh, that's the first uh, not good sign. And uh, so let's see why that would be. So we uh, when we merge a player in, uh, we get their peer ID. But I don't think we should be doing that. I think we should have a uh, um, a way to just assign. We got a connection ID in here that does a network dot ID, and I can't say I like that. I think we want to say peer ID, and we could say peer dot simplify ID. I like that. Um, of course, we need to import peer. For other connection ID references, uh, none. So that's interesting on its own. But uh, we do have peer ID in here now. So it's simplified, and uh, I'm pretty sure we passed the simplified version. Okay, so let's try this one more time. Just refresh both, just to be sure we have a clean state. Yeah, we're just gonna join, join there. We're gonna say this is going to be top. Cool, and we're gonna add in bottom. Cool. So we've got these two players, and if I even look here with the uh, message payload, we update a player. And that player certainly seems to have a number of things like an ID. They have a peer ID, which does line up with uh, with their peer. Now, if we refresh, that removed the player. Uh, we got a warning, but we didn't get like an infinite loop. So that leads me to believe that I have no idea what, what the original error is. But moving that subscription down to the bottom uh, certainly uh, did some good things for us. Also, it looks like we've got. Uh, Oh, never mind. I see. I thought I had an extra Firefox. Okay, so what's cool about this is I think I can officially say that I've fixed the disconnect error. So I'll say fix uh, client disconnect error. And we just did that by shuffling around where the subscription was. That kind of concerns me a little bit. It makes me wonder um, if there's like some sort of like maybe bug in hyper app that just got happened to get exposed by how uh, subscriptions were being uh, rerouted. Um, but anyway, let's uh, get past that. We're gonna reconnect. Um, interesting. Um, I'm gonna refresh this again. We're going to. Oh, oh, that's. All right, that that made sense. I'm gonna post another game here, just because. Uh, not sure what having the server off, like what sort of state issues that would cause, but so this is gonna be top. And we're just gonna make sure that now in game uh, everything still works as expected as well. All this 
data set. Uh, this all looks pretty good. I guess I should open up the console down here too, and then if something goes horribly wrong, uh, we can fix it. So let's we'll start uh, start the game here, and then we're going to uh, down here start the game. Yeah. So one problem is it looks like we. Uh, Uh, what, do you, what do you call it? So we, we accidentally like spawn uh, the player that was in originally and uh, we, we don't want to respawn that player. That's pretty fun. Top and bottom, eh? Oh yeah. I know what my audience likes. So I'm gonna refresh this. That player disappears. Um, <laughs> yeah, so uh, the zoom is actually uh, really intuitive, uh, which I, I love when things end up being intuitive. So on my canvas, um, I have a component, and what this component does is it takes in all the players that we care about. I'm just calling them targets, um, and I just figure out where the like the leftmost coordinate is. And the topmost coordinate is, and the rightmost coordinate is, and the bottommost coordinate of like all the players that are active on the screen. And then I added some padding because obviously you want like you don't want like one of your characters to be on the edge and you can't see like what's to the left of them or to the right of them um, because it's being cut off. So there's some extra padding in there. Now we do some like math to make sure we preserve the aspect ratio, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, I sort of wish I didn't do this to be honest. It, it does. There's like a bit of a thing that you'll notice when uh, when the uh, height is bigger, so I almost want to just like always do this ratio and live with it. Um, but anyway, there's that, and uh, then uh, we just translate all of the canvas based on like the position minus like half the size of the the camera, and then scale it, and then draw our stuff. So it's uh, it's pretty neat. Uh, I've I've done this uh, uh, for the space shooter I was doing as well. Uh, and you can use very similar code to to do um, what do you call it like split screen as well, which is uh, another really neat thing. But anyway, um, let's see. Actually, while I'm at it, you know we can do this a little bit. And then if we uh, restart a new game. top again change the color this time why not by the way does anyone use like the uh, the this default HTML um, color picker it's not too bad um, in Firefox and Chrome uh, it's definitely manageable and then I just get like a more transparent version of it up here and yeah, I'm gonna close uh, close that and shrink this up and uh, save down here And let's go with a uh, nice intense magenta. Everyone's favorite color, of course. Oh yeah, now we've got running too. So um, that's pretty neat. And then uh, based on uh, if you're moving or running, uh, there's like different uh, different attacks. They're a little subtle though to like see the difference. A <laughs> little bit of muscle memory on that one, eh? That's okay. You know, boys will be boys. Cool. So anyway, um... <laughs> I was in the pool! Cool. So I think the last thing 
to officially say that we are done done this code is we want to um, fix that like spawning thing so when you start the game um, it doesn't like spawn in the players that aren't you so let's see what's uh, where's gonna be the spot for that I'm guessing it's gonna be like an actions and we're gonna find game start and here we go through all the local IDs and message them um, oh maybe it's uh, maybe we're not receiving updates of those players hmm Yeah, so we could do could do a couple things. So uh, one thought that I have is we need a way to send a message to or about multiple players at once. So like we have player update, but I sort of want like a um, like players update. Then we can just uh, do like a um, data dot players dot for each the player. Oh jeez, this isn't even my first time typing. You know, like it's not my first rodeo. Oh jeez. So we're going to dispatch a bunch of this and of course now we just have a player and what's going on here? Oh I see, yeah let's uh, pass player as an object down there, clear that. And this is mostly to, uh, there's one spot where we, we, we potentially send like all the players at once but we like loop through them and that's kind of painful and we're gonna find that that's I'm pretty sure in player and we're gonna look for like local players oh here we go and we map that out and really this could become effects dot message clients and we're gonna send uh, this to our one client and uh, this time we're instead of one we're gonna say here's all of our players and this is going to be uh, four players and then we can get rid of that and that feels much better we're only sending out like one thing at a time and let's see so we want a way to say when we start a game we want to like broadcast uh, to all the other players like hey tell me where your player is maybe hmm. and the other option is just at the end of each frame we always broadcast out all the player positions um, but that's sort of heavy-handed but m maybe it's the right move I know uh, what the local players are. At least I should. Yes, yeah, so down here we could do something like uh, local players, and uh, we can do what is it? Uh, object. Keys state dot controls dot. Eh, let's break this up a little bit. And map, and we're gonna have an ID, and we're gonna get players ID or <laughs> or OD backslash or whatever. Okay, so we, we schedule our, our next render, and we kill whatever players we need to. And at the end of it, we just send a uh, effects dot message clients, and clients are going to be state dot network dot clients. We want to send it to everyone, and our payload is going to be type layers update. And our players are going to be our local players. Now, optionally.
Unfortunately, I could just um, line that. Is that like three and then it's four. So that might fix it. Because I, I have a suspicion that it just doesn't get the information about the, uh, the player being updated. And this will like mostly keep it in sync. Now I also send inputs, um, so there might be some uh, some way that I don't necessarily send this every single time, but we'll we'll see if we get like some sort of like crazy lag or, or anything. I'm I'm guessing I won't locally, um, like that. That makes a lot of sense um, that there won't be a big local issue because you know we don't have to go through the network very far, which may or may not be true. Um, this is like peer to peer isn't quite the peer-to-peer -peer that I think I was sold on. Okay, so that, that did take care of things uh, the way I thought. Okay, and then up here. So um, that's working like pretty good, and it dealt with the reset. Uh, they don't currently. Um, so the reason I did running in general is so when you attack, uh, there's no like walk animation. So uh, this walking attack. So yeah. So maybe maybe I'll be more more general. We're trying to explain this better. So I have a bunch of sprite sheets that are like associated with, with these players and I get three attacks. So one is this where it's like you lift up your foot and you kind of stomp down and swipe at the same time. Another is like sort of when you're like walking but at the pace of running but it's, it's kind of weird. And then uh, um, there isn't one that like directly corresponds with running uh, which you end up like having to like stop uh, to swipe. Um, so what I did, and I don't know if I'm happy with it, is defaulted to walking. So I get like a run and a walk animation. And because the walk sort of has this like um, uh, attack animation that has like a walk on it, it felt like kind of natural there. Whereas the run, like if you watch the legs uh, during the walking attack, might be hard to kind of see on like over the stream. Um, but they like it moves too fast, but I don't have a, a way to do it better. I shouldn't say that. Uh, I can like change the uh, thing, but it's like, yeah, it, it was kind of weird, and that makes me like sort of not satisfied with uh, uh, with these sprite sheets. But I really like them because of the smooth animation. Um, like everything looks good about them, but there's there's a handful of like problems that make it um, make it tough uh, to do a couple things. Like uh, so, for instance, when I'm facing this way, the uh, the sprite sheet box like kind of extends out to here. Uh, so I'm doing some math. So you'll notice like when I when I uh, turn, for instance, like it it like shifts the character over because there's like some math that I'm not doing perfectly. Um, and that's kind of frustrating. Um, there's a couple other sprite sheets I might like swap in at some point, uh, since for the most part my code isn't like super dependent on uh, the sprite sheet. So I don't know. We'll see. Uh, anyway, it's uh, that's a long way of saying I'm happy with where the network code is right now. So I think we're at a point where I can commit this. Um, yeah, so what do we do in here? We did a couple things. So we always transmit, uh, transmit the, uh, the player stuff now. Oh, by the way, we can try doing a live game of this too, because uh, I can push it up. And uh, I think I can just dump the link in here. I don't think I have any particular uh, stream uh, restrictions on URLs. I could be wrong on that. We'll see. Um, 
Anyway, uh, let's uh, first of all make sure we got rid of any console logging that we don't need. Uh, like this on data, don't need that. Console logs, as we all know, slow things down and can do some not great stuff. Um, yeah, I sort of want to keep those for debugging, but uh, I would rather uh, rather not. You know, keep those. So. Those and let's just keep on going. Got that. Got that. So on disconnect, uh, do nothing, which is sort of intentional. On error, we want to report something there. I'll cancel and get rid of. So that's not too bad. Actually, you know what? Let's uh, let's bring this back. That'll be like good debug information if, if there's some frequent issues there. So let's just do uh, another search for console in here. Those three I'm happy with. Um, this I'm happy with. This I do not want anymore. Skipping that as well. So uh, we're gonna say a commit. Uh, this will be like um, uh, multiplayer. Or I guess this would be just send uh, all player data. Oh, um, so running attacks like work, but they they don't do anything special right now. Um, I guess like the way Smash Brothers works is. Uh, the more times you're hit, the more, uh, the easier it is to like use forceful attacks. So, so I don't know that I'm gonna do any like uh, special, um, special things based on like running versus walking. But like I'm on the fence, uh, to be like perfectly honest. But we'll see. Like I want to see what like the mechanics of uh, health and lives are gonna like be before I start like playing around with like the individual attacks um, but obviously like if it's more advantageous to run all the time uh, then I'm going to try and like I guess play with that yeah yeah because someone was telling me like if if there's walk uh, like what's the point of of, uh, of walking if if you can run and that I'm not like super sure of I don't, I don't know. All right. Anyway, so uh, we send all player data, uh, and this sort of includes a couple things, uh, like uh, send all local players to all connections uh, every for uh, end of frame. Which seems like it's going to be a bad time once I get to like real networking. So we will do a test game, I think, with anyone on the stream that wants to like give it a shot. Um, but I I don't know how to manage that well, because like that does mean that you're technically like connecting to me as a computer. I don't know how comfortable I am with that. So maybe James, I'll send it to you privately. We can we can play around. Not that I like don't trust the internet, but uh, I also don't trust the internet. <laughs> you know, it's just how the internet is. Um, yeah, so send all uh, player connections. Uh, it'll say still sending inputs. <laughs> uh, no, I think uh, it'll just be a, a you, you, me, and then I'll load up probably like two two browsers as well. So basically, I want to test like the data throughput and figure out how that all all fits in um yeah so still, still sending all inputs uh, input changes but that shouldn't be too heavy so i'm not too worried about that and uh what else did we do um ditched uh, connections for clients probably other stuff too um 
apparently, the, oh no, the actions make sense. And the camera, we got rid of the uh, uh, move camera. Um, I'm gonna call it like uh, height scaling. That's not really it, but like uh, height, height scaling aspect ratio stuff. So while that's going on, I'm just going to go over to uh, um, this repo and we're going to PR and merge. So uh, don't mind me. And then there's always that like something, 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 new GitHub sucks, uh, I think is the, how people feel about it. It's kind of funny, like uh, just looking at my my commits for the multiplayer branch, and like my first commit was like ninety nine percent of the way there, and then like twenty commits later. So I think like I got the framework, and that was like the ninety nine percent. But then like um, cleaning it up was a bit of extra work. Anyway, I'm going to um, I'm gonna squash this. It's it's huge, and. Um, Let's see, uh, test it, okay, so, sure, uh, let's do JSON serialize, mesh networking, network animation, or attack animation, uh, some better, okay, well that's fine, uh, fix respawn and death state, uh, split and refactor of actions. Sure, I think that's a relevant thing. Different attacks based on run and walk. Yeah, that's pretty relevant. Animation pipeline, that's relevant. Tweak idle walk attacks. I don't care about the tweaking part. Extract a canvas action. Sure, remove. Uh, actually, no, that's already kind of covered. And then, uh, yeah, that's fine. Fix gamepad, player logic, yeah, transmit attacks over network properly, yeah, ensure clients send their local players to new connections, yeah, uh, fix extra key map, don't care about that, uh, don't use binary packing, sure, don't let peer client own connection, I don't know what that means, so I'm just going to remove that, camera management, sure, add camera component, that's kind of part of the same thing, clean up network code, um, I'm gonna say no to that. We don't need that as a message because this is just the network code. Um, fix client disconnect error. Don't know. Send all player stuff. Cool. Confirm squash. All right. So I'm gonna delete that branch and we're gonna check out master. And we're gonna pull it all in and we're gonna delete the multiplayer branch because now we don't need it. We're gonna do the old yarn, I'm gonna do RF cache and dist. Cool. Alright, so this is what I'm gonna do. So we've got a uh, Chrome window and we've got this. Um, uh, let's see, I'm gonna, behind the scenes, uh, James, I'm gonna send you a link to Netlify, the Netlify URL. So let's open up Telegram and hope it opens in my private window here. Cool. Um, uh, let's see. Let's grab that. And uh, looks like uh, production is maybe I'll deploy it. Oh yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's uh oh no, I don't want that. I want like the the real the real URL. Okay, so uh, James, I'm gonna send that. Well, you know what? I guess everyone's going to see the URL, so I'm just going to dump it in chat. Oh, hey, Wolfgang. Um, hey, you want to help me test out a game with uh, everyone else? Um, 
go here. Um, I'm gonna go there in uh, Firefox and Chrome. You know, all, all the good guys. I fix the uh, all sorts of bad stuff. And uh, let's see. So I'm gonna host a game. That's the join code. I'm just gonna dump it, dump it in there. Everyone join up. This is gonna be. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll use my name, why not? Uh, Chrome and uh, use arrows, I'm not sure. And we're gonna, you know, join in. And we're gonna say Alex Firefox. And you know what? That can also be arrows, why not? Alright, join now. Go, go, go. Join, join, join. Yeah, yeah, this uh, watch me code turned into a let's play. Okay, so it looks like uh, got some issues over here. I don't see everyone yet in the game in Firefox, but that's probably fine. Let's just roll with it, you know? Let's see what happens. So we're gonna, I'm gonna start the game, and I'm gonna join in here, and... Cool. That's not too bad. Let's see, Firefox. So outside of me not seeing the, the new players initially, that's not too bad. Now the one thing is I find it it's not easy to track uh, where your own players are. So I don't know what I think about that yet. Um, I can make the camera focus like specifically on your players. And that could help a little bit, or I could like make it so the arrows only show on on your players or something, something to that extent. Uh, but what do you guys think? Uh, how's lag? Looks like attacking's got a little bit of lag on there. Attacking Wolfgang and not getting any results there. Oh, okay, so so there are some issues where uh, not not everyone's getting like the distributed updates. So that's interesting. Um, so James, uh, do you want to privately message me? You could just use like uh, Telegram or whatever. Um, and uh, just let me know if there's any like um, any errors specifically in in the console. Okay, so so yeah, not everyone is seeing everyone. Uh, so that's interesting though. Okay, then everyone just disconnected. You could reconnect again too. Um, Hmm. That's fun. Um, so no console here. So that's that's very interesting. I wonder if that has something to do with the the mesh network going outwards. So there are some instances where uh, peers won't be allowed to connect to each other. And I'm not 100% sure why that is. But even here on Chrome, I don't see my uh, my Firefox character. So that is uh, certainly interesting. Yeah, we'll use my gamepad in this one too. Why not? And. Uh, We'll use uh, Steam Man. We'll see. Yeah, so I'm still not seeing like all the characters all the time. So that's interesting too.
one thing that's like kind of interesting is um, the camera like seems to like be aware that there's uh, multiple players. So that's interesting on its own. Yeah, there's there's certainly a lot of glitchiness going on still. So, hmm. so I'm gonna have to figure out if I can reproduce a lot of these networking, like uh, connection things, um, like locally. Like if if I just have enough connections coming in, if if I have uh, um, everything. Like on my Chrome, I see everybody, but I don't see necessarily everyone on Firefox. So it makes me feel like the uh, uh, some of the socket connections are working differently than expected. Hmm. But okay, so that, that gives me a list of things. Um, so let me just uh, pull open the old uh, the old board over here. So uh, let's add some issues in here. So we're going to say uh, uh, not all network clients see each other. Uh, so there's going to be a couple things here. Uh, which, which sort of uh, browsers are, is everyone using? Like are, are we all on like mostly Chrome or is there some other stuff going on? Uh, but we'll see. We'll say like... Uh, Firefox didn't uh, see all players, uh, which could be like, did the mesh network fail? Uh, the Chrome host uh, appeared to see everyone. So it could be that local host is like good. Um, okay, we'll say. Um, maybe inconsistencies between Firefox, Chrome, Chromium. There's going to be like the uh, the targets, and then uh, so I'm running Linux as well. So yeah, um, could be that like some of the data is being transmitted. Um, okay, so we're going to say maybe inconsistencies between Linux, Mac, hey Wolfgang, what, uh, what are you using, like uh, Linux, Mac, Windows, so I can like kind of, I've got like a dual boot of Windows Linux and I've got a, a MacBook that I can spin up to. So I'm just curious like what sort of tests I need to do to uh, to like reproduce locally. Okay. But like uh, for, for this test right now it's uh, Linux. So we'll say Linux Mac. Um, we'll get back to that. Um, now let's do a new issue. We're going to say uh, attacking over network is, I guess, just very inconsistent. Because, uh, yeah, I was noticing there was like some lag and all, all sorts of weird things that weren't, weren't super clear on uh, what the issue was. But uh, sometimes, yeah, sometimes attacks uh, don't land. Uh, some attacks. Ugh. We're heavily delayed. Okay, and then uh, what else? So, uh, the camera, yeah, um, camera uh, is, I'm just going to say janky. Alright, so I'm going to say uh, removed uh, height. Aspect ratio um, toggling uh, because it caused jank, but <laughs> uh, the width doesn't always show all layers uh, as expected. Um, okay. 
so that gives me like a handful of tickets. I've been streaming for two and a half hours now, so my brain's starting to uh, to go as well. So, um, so I'm just like checking to, the, to make sure we're not getting like a bunch of new people coming on, and then I gotta be like, sorry, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not playing anymore. Um, let's see, do we get any other new people joining? No. Okay, so um, that's that. If uh, if anyone had any any questions about uh, how to how to play or um, if they want to try it out, uh, feel free. Uh, this URL isn't going to change anytime soon. Um, there's there's clearly some like some debug stuff that is going to have to be changed at some point. Whoa. Everyone left, but I'm gonna I'm gonna close it too. Um, and if you see any more bugs, feel free to add uh, bug reports here to uh, Mr. Osberry slash uh, Smash. You know all that stuff. Uh, that's uh, I'm gonna wrap this up. All right. Um, wow. So um, cool. If if you like the stream, uh, like hanging out or whatever, and you want to support me. Uh, financially uh, you, you can do so at one of those two QR codes or you can follow whoa the links over here uh, to uh, mr. Barry which I have links to patreon and github and stuff if you want to chat with me uh, you can find the hyper app slack channel probably googling that and then I'm uh, mr. Osberry on there feel free to uh, talk with me there but also be respectful of that it is a mostly hype rap focused uh, thing. Um, any crypto addresses to send to? Uh, there is not right now, uh, but if that is a thing that you want to do, I can set one up. I, I've, I think, historically had a couple and just like uh, had maybe like 30 Canadian dollars or something on them, like nothing, nothing too substantial and. I may or may not have just dropped access to them over time, um, but you can. I think with uh, I think with GitHub you can do like a one-time sponsorship. But if if you want to do it through crypto, uh, I'm gonna have to set something up. So that'll be a separate thing. Um, but at some point, uh, imagine to my uh, to to my whatever direction this is on your screen there'll be another QR code and it will be some sort of crypto address that you can send money to. Something like that in the future, maybe. Um, cool, so hopefully you enjoyed yourselves. Uh, if you enjoy uh, watching me code or watching uh, game live streams, uh, uh, I do those semi-frequently, so please, uh, feel free to stop by. I announce them on Twitter, so if you want to know about them, follow me on Twitter. I really need a timer for ending these things because it's always awkward and I always feel like there's a lot of information that I miss. But uh, through the magic of the internet, I'm, I'm going away. Have a lovely rest of your Saturday and stay safe and healthy. And I love you all. Bye.